Uh, welcome to the Jenkins Documentation Office, office Hours. Uh, today is March 16th, uh, and this is the uh, EU US edition. Uh, today we have myself and Mark Waite, and if anyone else joins, we'll be sure to add them and welcome them as we go. Uh, on the agenda today, we have some action items of blog posts that have been recently published. Uh, just quick updates on the LTS release last week and our weekly releases. Um, documentation transition from Java 11 to Java 17. This is something we've been discussing for a few weeks and we'll revisit. Uh, adding books to Jenkins.io. This has become something that's uh, popping up more and more now. And we want to uh, figure out alignment and standards for that. Uh, improving end of life notifications and how we can better uh, provide users with this information, how can we uh, increase the visibility of this? How can we make sure that everything is uh, as seamless as possible? Because it's hard sometimes and some things uh, yeah, take people by surprise. Uh, there's the prep for CentOS 7 end of life, which ties into the end of life notifications. Uh, this is something that we've been discussing for a bit now. Uh, and uh, so potentially is going to be removed from this sentence. And we have moved doc docs office hours an hour earlier um, in the day to account for daylight savings time in the US. And more importantly, making sure that this is available and accessible for our uh, compatriots in the EU. This is, uh, it would be, it's just way later in the day than it needs to be. And we want to keep that in mind and be respectful at everyone's time. So, uh, yeah. Um, anything else on these, Mark, or is there anything? Uh, no other anything topics. Those okay. look like good topics. Okay, wonderful. And, and we have, okay, so we'll start with the action items. Um, so two recent blog posts by Bruno Verachten, uh, both in, uh, regarding the Minigen, which is an awesome little controller machine. If you have not seen it yet, or if you weren't at FOSM, definitely take a time to check these out. Uh, Bruno gives a background about what Minigen actually is and what it's capable of, uh, and has written another blog post about how uh, it ties into RISC-V and um, other architecture and usage. He gives some background on how this came to be. Um, it, it's just a really nice insight into what is possible with Jenkins and just the really uh, out there uses that can come from it. Um, and kudos to Bruno for, you know, putting all this together, making this, this is a lot of uh, just kind of, I, I would say passion work at this point, but yeah. Um, hi Bruno, welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much for the kind words. <laughs> of course. Of course. But, sorry uh, for being late. Yep. Ah, no worries at all. No, uh, but uh, yeah, then just, uh, I, these are really great blog posts and I think they do a really good job of uh, just share, showing, showcasing how unique and different each Jenkins usage can be and just the different ways that we can achieve the same goals. So, And thank, thank you. you so much for the review and the suggestions and uh, corrections on. That was much needed. Thank you. <laughs> no worries at all. We're all, always happy to help. Uh, the next post was uh, just an update from uh, Mark about our Alassian Atlassian partnership and sponsorship. So we are going to continue to have Jira available for Jenkins as Atlassian has uh, is continuing to uh, provide that for us. And so we will continue to have Jenkins Jira um, tracking. Uh, there was an update this past Saturday that's now done, of course, and everything should be uh, working as it was before. A uh, quick update. So the Jenkins Awards voting period is officially open as of last Wednesday. Uh, the recent blog post here just shows what the awards, the Jenkins Awards are and the nominees for them. Uh, you can use this Google, the Google form attached or linked in the sheet here uh, to vote. You do need a GitHub account, but uh, this is where you can go and uh, make your voice heard. Uh, and I've also linked it here in the docs notes, just so that if anyone is looking for it, they can get to it very easily. Uh, and again, these uh, voting will be open until March 28th, and the winners will be announced at CDCon this year. So uh, if you haven't yet, please, by all means, take a minute, check out the voting. And um, there are additional issues that show the awards and a little bit more information about them. Uh, so if you are curious, you can get some more info about that as well. 
Uh, and finally, uh, we did publish our February newsletter last week. So this has now, uh, this is now live on the blog, uh, highlighting a bunch of awesome things that we got to do in January, uh, February, including FOSM 2023, which uh, we have a separate blog post from our attendees and participants that uh, show some insights and uh, just some great reflection on FOSM, which was really exciting to be back in person this year. So thank you to everyone who attended. and helped out with the Jenkins booth. Uh, next up, just a quick update on the releases we've had recently. So uh, last week we had LTS 2.387.1 um, and we also had uh, 2.375.4 and 2.394 come out, uh, 2.394 being the weekly. Uh, but the security team actually assisted in putting a lot of these together and putting, in, putting together the change log. Uh, and release notes for these releases. Uh, so huge thanks to them for all their assistance with that. And uh, yeah, this week we've also released 2.395 successfully and uh, something that we noted, we have not seen any regressions for the new releases as of yet. So uh, we're doing really well. This is great to see. Uh, next up on the list here, we have the documentation transition from Java 11 to Java 17. Uh, at the point of Debian 12's release. Um, now, I want to be clear, uh, Debian 12's release is not going to include uh, Java 11, but Java 17 instead. Uh, however, um, we're going to look to transition the documentation regardless of the Debian release to make sure that we're giving everyone a, the best baseline possible to work from, uh, providing the um, correct resources and uh, instructions based on what seems to work best. Um, Job 11 will still be supported. That's not getting dropped until uh, 2024 at the very earliest. And Java 17 is fully supported as of last August or September, I want to, September. Um, so there's no reason not to, and it provides extra further functionalities and testing that just doesn't exist in Java 11. So um, it's a great time to do, make the change because of the Debian release, but the change is going to happen either way. Um, it'll also be part of the Windows and Linux install docs because Java 17 will be the baseline we're using for that. Um, I've emailed Tim Jacob, so he's aware of the, uh, the transition and on board with it. Uh, and one of the things that uh, I just thought of uh, was that we need to also make sure that any issues that are present in Java 17 are taken care of before we transition the docs so that if we do provide that instruction, uh, no surprises. So. Uh, but this will happen sometime in April or May, so coming up soon, uh, but uh, we still have time to figure out what that's going to look like. Uh, again, uh, adding books to Jenkins.io is something that so we've seen Kevin, a lot Kevin, actually, oh, sorry, before, before we go off that topic, there's a reminder. Yeah. You, you said something there that was crucial, and I learned of a, an issue yesterday that is was specific to Java 17, and so you highlighted that we need to be sensitive to we need to continue watching for java 17 specific issues because they might persuade us to to delay upgrade on on of change of that documentation right now i think the issue is resolved but it was a particularly complicated issue that basil crow had to investigate that was specific to, to java 17. he's investigated it i don't know yet if the fix is released um, thanks, but we've got to be continue monitoring bug reports to see if there are any that are specific to Java 17 that might cause us to say, oh, we need to delay this a little bit. Right now, right. I think we're on track April or May. We we make that transition and announce it because people can still use Java 11. Right, of course. And Java 11, uh, you know, as we said, isn't going to be dropped until uh, 2024. So there's still lots of time left for Java 11 usage. Right. So Mark, uh, was it in uh, the Jenkins core? Of course it was. No, it was not. No, no okay. actually it was not. It was in the job DSL plugin. And oh. and so job DSL plugin, that's a, that's a rather obscure case, but it's got 40,000 plus installations. Mm -hmm. And so it's a very popular plugin. It's especially popular in very large installations, right? So uh, there, are, there are companies that run huge Jenkins controllers and job DSL is very important for them. So if they would have been blocked from going to Java 17 because this job DSL bug 
made it simply not work on Java 17. Um, maybe it's too early, maybe it's not necessary, but um, do we have a Jira epic or something, a place somewhere in the documentation where we could list all the problems we are we have with GDK 17? We do. There's a what Basel had created is a set of three phases for the Java 17 project. Uh, just like he created a five phase epics for each of those three phases. And yet there are epics for each of the five phases that we went through for Java 11. So we wow. have an epic that we can attach there. It's a good suggestion. Let me put the... Yeah, thank you. Put, but Basil being Basil, this. my question was stupid. Of course, Basil does that kind of thing. So. No, 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 your question was not stupid at all. Your question was a very good question. It's just a delight to say, yes, that was that was considered. And yes, we've got a way to of do course. it. But yeah. I haven't checked to see if this job DSL bug is actually attached to oh, yeah. the Java 17 epic because... Uh, that may have been missed, and if it was missed, it'd be a good thing to attach it. Thank you. Yeah, very good question. Thank you. Yeah, that's great to know, and thanks, uh, Bruno, for bringing that up. I didn't think of it myself, so that's fantastic okay. knowledge. Thank to you, have. both. Okay, yeah, it's not so that stupid. Got it. I'll put the I'll put the link to the bug report in, and let's see. So. So it was that a job DSL bug was specific to JDK 17, fixed by Basel in this thing. PR1264. Good. And um, so, and that's, there's a, there's an issue, where was it? That was, that has a Jenkins issue associated with it. And we can link to that Jenkins issue and see if that Jenkins issue is correctly attached into the, mm -hmm. into the Epic. And it is, it's attached to Java 17 support, phase one support Java 17. Good. But we should, we should put that epic because we don't know how bugs will arrive and, and not arrive. So when we announce this change through a blog post, for instance, we should probably put a link to that epic so that people can see it saying, hey, look, we've switched and here's the, here's the point of pride that shows you can go here if you think that there's something that doesn't support Java 17. And that's uh, exactly like we had for Java 11 too, if anything. Right, right. So. Yeah. This, so whereas Java Java 11 had five phases, the Java 17 thing only has three phases. But yeah, it's it's the same same exact deal. Fantastic. Um, thank you very much, Mark, for all the additional context. That helps a lot. And Bruno for a sparking conversation. This is, like I said, I had no idea. So this is great. Uh, okay. Anything else on that one? Uh, Mark, Bruno, or that's for me. Thank you. That's it. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so uh, the next topic on the agenda is adding books to Jenkins.io. Um, this is something that's been coming up a lot more recently. Uh, folks are looking to contribute to Jenkins.io, and adding a book is a pretty easy way to go about contributing. Um, right now, the books page looks like this. Um, so we have just all the books laid out. Um, the numbering in the list is going to be removed pending my pull request. I've submitted a request to just get rid of the number order so that um, it's more general and not giving any sort of appearance of ranking. Um, but uh, what I've been seeing too is that um, with the book submissions, uh, there's potential to update the layout or provide a little bit less or more succinct uh, book summary here. Uh, some of these can be a little bit longer, but the idea is that we want to make, we want to drive people to interact with that book itself, not give them the book on the page. Um, so I was looking around and I did find this example. So uh, OpenStack has a books resource page and it's really clean, really simple. It's just a, a cover image, title, 
the author or publisher, uh, and then a really, really short summary of what the book's about. Uh, and then the link takes you either to the PAT, um, in these cases, uh, page for it, or in other cases, it can take you just right to the Amazon page. Uh, let's see, that one's not doing it, I think, this one. Or this one takes you to Vscaler. Uh, so it, it's just a nice, simple way to list the books. And uh, something like this, I think, would be a little more aligned with what we want for the books page. Uh, and then uh, the how to add this, uh, how to add a book entry is something that needs to be added to the Jenkins Contributing Guide. Um, once we've determined all of this, and once we have decided that this is what we want it to look like, this is how long we should have the summaries be, et cetera. Uh, once we have that, we'll be putting that into the Contributing Guide so that it's available for everyone. Um, so Kevin, yeah, yeah. I finally had the time today to have a look at that. Uh, I was intrigued because I wanted to know more about what could I find in a, in a book about Gen Kids. So mm -hmm. the thing, the first thing that struck me is that how am I supposed to go directly from the front page to this book page? I didn't find it. I had to use a search bar. It's a secret right now, Bruno. Oh, that's why. Okay, perfect. Then fine with me. <laughs> Sorry, it, it, that's really embarrassing to say, but it's it was yeah. a, it was an experiment launched to see how it would pan out, and and the experiment has turned into actually quite a useful thing, right? I, I mean, I think I think there's interest here, but I don't think it's ready for prime prime time yet, particularly because of the numbers on the top left, the the one, two, three, et cetera, mm -hmm. because they they mistakenly lead people to think we've somehow ranked these or prioritized them. Yep. And I was almost ready to buy something, but the thing is the latest one is not a subject I'd like to address as soon as possible. I would have been, yeah, Jenkins 2 up and running if it wasn't from 2018, uh, 2018, sorry. Um, because so much things have changed in Jenkins lately that I'd like something from last month. <laughs> well, well, and and that hints that we may someday on this page want something that sorts by publish date, yep. or sorts by by author, or sorts by me by publisher. Right? Those are all those are all valid questions, and none of those things are represented on this page yet. Yes, but it's a project. Okay, I didn't get that earlier. Thank you. No worries. Thank you very much, Bruno, for bringing all that up. Um, yeah, and, and this was actually part of Hacktoberfest, if I'm not mistaken, initially. Oh. Um, and something that Chris Stern was uh, had originally pitched and followed through on. So, I, and I and this was around the time that Gavin Mogan was working on the web components for the header and footer. Mm. So uh, I think, and this is just me speculating on what I can see from in front of me. I think it was just like a perfect timing of the books page was created, but then the web, I, the components were created, and um, they just didn't have each other. So uh, we have the lovely uh, components, the header and footer, but uh, unfortunately, it's not listed in the about link like it uh, was intended to. So for right now, it's there, but you're right, it's not really uh, readily available as a navigation point. So something we need to fix. But um, but yeah, like Mark said, want to make sure that everything is impartial and uh, in line with how we want to present the books. Um, I want to make sure that the formatting and text is OK. Um, these number lists that are not formatted as a numbered list kind of take away from that. So um, there are a couple things that need to be adjusted. But uh, yeah, this is something that I noticed coming in a lot more of and with the amount of response people are getting are uh, providing for this i think it would be uh, very good to just have that kind of guidelines in the contributing guide too so and i i think time or date of publication or um, the publication date and stuff like that is absolutely crucial when we're putting these books on the page because we do want to make sure that it's relevant information up to date um, some, you know, nothing misinformed or uh, perhaps referring to older versions that are simply not supported. So um, these are, the books do need to be vetted a bit better. Um, how we go about doing that is another question. Uh, but that's, you know, that's, again, something we can absolutely figure out as we go along. This isn't um, 
make or break to the Jenkins experience, thankfully. So uh, we can take our time a little bit, but yeah. Uh, anything else on the books topic from uh, Mark or Bruno? No? Nothing okay. from me. Okay, thank you. Uh, next up on the list is uh, the improvement of end of life notifications. And uh, in tandem with that, the prep for the Cent 07 end of life. Um, so the way it stands right now is right now, uh, when things reach end of life, we don't necessarily have a way to communicate that properly to our user base. Uh, we want to change that, of course, and make sure that uh, users are notified if anything that they're using is uh, going to be hitting their end of life uh, sooner than later. Uh, we have some examples right now. So uh, for instance, Ubuntu 18.04 is one of those candidates. Uh, the Blue Ocean container page, the CentOS 7 container image, uh, the Arch Linux agent container image. There are several things that we can consider coming up on end of life that these are things we want to notify people of and give them the best chance to take care of before it becomes end of life. Um, we need to figure out how that notification would you know be delivered and how it would look and how it would give that information um, but we do have this really nice site uh endoflife.date that is uh it's it, it's got an api uh guide so it also it's open and interactable so that could be something that is potentially automated down the line um, it also has end of life for most things um, that you run into contact with while using Jenkins, including Jenkins itself. Um, so lots of great info there, but um, utilizing that, leveraging that would be a good way to get this information out. Um, we also are considering blog posts, other announcements within meetings, um, just multiple avenues to get this information out and deliver it to the user base. Um, so the, Oh, ahead, Kevin, Mark. you just you just reminded me there's something that needs to be fixed on the end of life date page, and I'm not sure how how we explore that with them. You you right there. That's the perfect page. Notice mm -hmm. that it shows 2.375. That's correct, and it is in fact a a valid version, but mm -hmm. 2.387 is not listed here, so right. we're missing the current LTS. Right. And, and I'm not even sure how to present it here because 375.4 is the current LTS, but we expect no further security fixes in it. So it's actually, therefore, per their definition, end of life. The next one should be inserted. I'll insert it and see if we can get this right. But then I've got to have a conversation with the maintainers of this site to automate that release detection logic. I don't know how they do it. Okay. Well, that's good. We caught that then. Make sure that this is all up to date because, yeah, because 2.387.1 also came out on the same day, but maybe it, maybe it, the release order was just slightly different. Who knows? Uh, you know, I suspect oh. that it's, it's that they're, they're, a, they're, the page is not correctly configured to automatically generate the next LTS version. And it may have oh. to be a manual process. So uh. this is, this looks an awful lot like an ASCII doc page. I think it actually is ASCII doc, but it, it it's a very mm -hmm. simple to edit format, but the editing was required actual editing, not just a machine that ran a program. Got it. Okay. That makes way more sense. Good to know. Okay, great. Thank you very much, Mark. Um, so, and in tandem with the notifications, CentOS 7 is nearing end of life uh, next June. It's been in maintenance mode since 2020, however, uh, and it is looking at older versions of uh, Git and SSH. So uh, two things that are crucial to plugins working and operating properly uh, that it just does not necessarily have. Um, it's not supported by the Jenkins RPM installer and not maintained in its own container image at this point. Um, the end of life is June 2024. Uh, so again, like there's several reasons why pushing this to end of life now or sooner than later is the right call. Uh, this is something that Mark's been proposing and uh, will be, if not, he's already created a JEP4. Uh, and so we're gonna capture the end of life in CentOS 7 in the Epic, uh, announce the deprecation before it happens, stop uh, making sure to stop running automated tests in CentOS 7. 
uh, and just in general, making sure that we can remove all the CentOS 7 information from the documentation. Um, this has started. We are, uh, there have been a few places where Rocky Alma um, 8 and 9 are suggested as opposed to uh, CentOS 7. Uh, and there are a couple other options here. I forget what they are off the top of my head right now, but um, there are multiple uh, alternatives that we can recommend instead of CentOS 7 or utilize instead of CentOS 7. Uh, and so making sure that the correct versions and up to date options are present in the documentations is one of the, ne the next big tasks as well. Um, Mark, did, was there anything else on the CentOS 7 end of life information? No, no I oh. haven't submitted the Jenkins enhancement proposal yet, but I will. Okay. It's yeah. it's it's coming. Okay, no worries. Not no issue there. Um, yeah, and the last thing on the agenda again, we're just going to move the docs office hours to an earlier time, one hour earlier. Uh, making sure that this is readily available for everyone in the EU, US. This it's uh, if we stick to crazy daylight savings time here on my, on my East Coast, it's going to be way too late. And uh, I don't feel comfortable with that for the whole um, rest of the world. So we're going to adjust that. And uh, today's the first day. So um, yeah, so now it's going to be at, it's going to remain at one o'clock my time, EST, that's not UTC. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> um, Bruno, maybe you can help me. What time? No, I don't think so. Uh, I'm <laughs> as lost as you are. And yesterday I discovered that in Phoenix, Arizona, they don't change with uh, summertime and winter time. I didn't know that, uh, which is kind of funny to me. And 10 days from now, it will be one hour later in France. So it will be about 7.30 p.m. So the time is fine with me for this week. And even in two weeks from now, that's Perfectly perfect. Thanks a lot for thinking of us, European folks. Yeah, so, of course. Bruno, would it be better for you if we moved it even one hour earlier so it was right after Google Summer of Code office hours? Yes, but you need some time to eat. If it's 1 p.m., Kevin, uh, I don't know. My schedule yeah. is so weird. Don't go off my eating. My eating habits are not normal. Please don't worry about me. Oh really? Yeah, and and back-to-back back-to-back <laughs> back -to -back meetings is actually healthier for me than than having an hour gap between them. Let me look for just a minute to see if if it would work for me on on the in the average case. So office hours for okay today GSOC office hours. Okay, it it would collide with advocacy and outreach if we moved it the hour earlier mm -hmm. advocacy and outreach happens twice a week on thursday so i think it's probably better to just leave it at the current time okay fine with me it, it, so long as that's okay with you bruno it is great okay if it's okay perfect. for you kevin also okay perfect Oh yeah, I'm the one suggesting it. I uh, I definitely am okay with it. Uh, and I already made sure it doesn't conflict with anything from me as well. So um, yeah, we can just keep it at that time and uh, just make life easier for everyone involved. Now that you have moved the time, I have to come every week. <laughs> I mean, you don't have to, you're more than welcome to. No, of do course, no, no, it's a pleasure. Yourself. It's a pleasure to be here and spend some quality time with you. That's cool. Oh, well, thank you, Brent. I appreciate it. And I'm glad you have fun here. That's, that's nice. Thank you. Uh, okay, done. So, uh, um, awesome. Um, that takes care of everything on the agenda. I just realized we're over time by a couple minutes. So, uh, we'll call things here. Uh, again, thanks for joining. I appreciate it. Uh, the video will be available in 24 to 48 hours. And take care. And until next week. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.